What's up guys, so we're in downtown Dubai. We're in front of the largest building in the world, Burj Khalifa. A true modern miracle of engineering. It is so big, almost a kilometer up into the sky, I believe. It's so big that actually when you look up at it, it kind of hurts your neck to look up and you kind of and you feel a bit dizzy because it's that high so i'm going to attempt to go up there today uh, apparently you can buy a ticket to go up to the uh, viewing platform so let's go and check it out and see if it's actually worth doing the trip so you can see the queue is absolutely massive to go up there uh, i'm going to try and wait i suppose no choice so let's see let's get in this queue absolutely huge okay so i managed to get stand in the queue and there's two options you can kind of go three quarters of the way up the gorge or you can go all the way up pretty much the, dif the difference in price wasn't that much so i decided that i was going to get the more expensive ticket to go all the way to the top because it included the drink and the use of the lounge and stuff and included with the uh, ticket the more expensive ticket is you get access to the aquarium so let's head over to the aquarium whilst i'm waiting i still have an hour and a bit until my time slot comes to actually go up so uh, let's all right so i made it to the aquarium it's quite a quite a walk actually from the place where you get the tickets to go up the tower until you get here so let's go inside and check it out all right so i went to the wrong entrance the wrong side i'm now walking around to the right side but you can see here next to me it's absolutely huge this aquarium tons and tons of people here taking selfies with the fish which is a bit random if you think about it but i suppose it's quite a sight actually so once you come through you can ruin everyone's photos by walking in front of them in front of the uh the fish tank so everyone here is taking pictures and then you walk kind of uh past them all destroying their photos so i'm going to be in hundreds of people's photos right now okay so when you come in basically the aquarium ticket is essentially walking through the tunnel under the, the water itself so let's have a look that's it so you literally just walk down the tunnel and it's the end um, will I stand there queuing probably not and then after you finish they funnel you through to collect your photo that you took at the beginning which I actually said no thank you they do tend to do that everywhere they uh, try and take a photo of you when you enter most of the places here and sell it to you at the end so the question is is it worth it queuing up to go see the aquarium? Uh, I think it's more impressive from the outside for free. Unless I'm missing something and there's another whole part to it that I haven't seen. Uh, the guy did, did say follow something, there's an underwater zoo, but I can't be bothered if I'm honest with you. I can see everything I want to see just from outside. It's almost six o'clock and it's time for the fountain show. You can see everyone's rushing down the escalators to go and see it. It's a bit like in Las Vegas, a massive fountain outside the bush. So let's go and check it out. So basically outside Dubai Mall, there's this big area, like a pool kind of thing, but obviously you don't swim in it. And uh, there's a fountain there. There's a show that happens, starts at 6 p.m. 
and then it goes on I think every half an hour it's like music and all this stuff so let's go and check it out see what all the fuss is about guys that was the fountain show I just about made it uh, between the things I'm running to see today before I have to go back to work so you can see lots of people lots of uh, crowds taking photos it's a big big tourist attraction this fountain so that's why you can see so many people here and it's literally all the way around I don't know if you can see in the, in the, in the last video it's literally hundreds of people standing around here to check out the show of some water being squirted into the air. But it's quite impressive actually. So weekends, Dubai Mall, super busy. Remember that when you're coming here, if you want to check out stuff, you probably have to come in the week. Because look at the amount of people here around me, especially around the fountain. Every hour and every half hour, so on the hour and the half hour, there's the show. You can just see people here, they just go crazy for it. Um, you can actually, I don't know if you can see it there, there's a boat going past. You can go on the boat and actually avoid the crowds and uh, explore that way as another option. So I'm heading over towards the gorge, the tower. Uh, still got about half an hour, so I'm probably going to catch the next show. <laughs> and then we're going to head up. So if you want to avoid the crowds, you've got two options basically. You can either go on the boat, or you can pay to go on this like pontoon thing in the middle of the, uh, the fountain lake. So uh, we're going to go on the pontoon and uh, see what it's like. To avoid the crowds, you pay 20 dirhams, which is around, I don't know, £2.20 or something and you come onto this uh, kind of bouncy pontoon and you can walk out to the centre. The lady just said to me, if you don't want to get wet, walk out into the middle of it. If you hang around this area, you're going to get soaked. So uh, let's go. Okay, so the beauty of it here as I said, there's not so many people. It's chill, taking mask off, not surrounded by millions of people. So uh, all we've got to do is just wait now. I'm gonna wait 15 minutes, have a closer look at the show, and then up to the top. It's 20, 29 minutes past, and all these little things come out of the water. I don't know if you can see them here on the lens, which means it's all about to kick off. Got me. Almost got me. There you go guys, the fountain show. You can stand here and not get wet, you just gotta know where to stand and work out what's in between those black things, the gaps, and then stand there, because these this little kid that stood over here got absolutely soaked. So there you go guys. It is worth paying to come onto this uh, little pontoon for two pounds, because you avoid all the crowds and you can be quite close up to it, if you wanna see it. So 
So when you get the uh, tickets, you get two options basically. You get one that's kind of like three quarters of the way up, or you can buy the uh, more expensive ones, which are all the way to the top, and then you get access to the lounge, and you get a free drink, and you can visit the other levels below. Um, so as part of that, as soon as you arrive, you get to sit in this area here and wait to be escorted up to the top, instead of queuing the whole uh, time. So let's see how it goes. So after you've been in the lounge, they come and get you, they give you this little VIP ticket and uh, you go through security, you take your lighters off, you're not allowed any e-cigarettes and we're heading up apparently, so let's see. Alright, so if you get the ticket where you go all the way to the top, you have to change lifts halfway, so you come up to about 125 I think we're on. And then you have to get another lift. Um, I think it's probably worth paying a bit extra for the VIP ticket because you kind of get rushed across all the all the people queuing. Kind of, they're still queuing to be done, but not as extreme. So just waiting now. Good evening. So welcome to the highest lounge in the world. In this lounge, as for your tickets, you'll get one complimentary drink. The first one is included on the ticket, the second one will be chargeable, okay? So two levels down is an open terrace. You can enjoy having coffee, tea, canapes, fruits, nuts, and the other sitting arrangement as well. So if you want to drink any alcohol, you can present the tickets to my colleague over here. We'll just stamp it and provide you with according to what you want to drink, okay? So I guess you'll be having a lovely evening this time. Yeah, if you need any help, just let us know. Thank you very much. So, I'm here at the highest lounge in the world. Guinness World Records. Cheers, guys. So, also part of the VIP experience is that you come into a lounge here. So, you get, you get a free complimentary alcoholic drink if you want. Um, Non-alcoholic drinks are unlimited, pretty much, so like apple juice, orange juice, etc. And as part of that, um, you get sort of, you can get some sandwiches, some tea, coffee, and some little cakes if you want. So I'm gonna have a couple of sandwiches, a cup of tea, and let's see what there is to see for the rest of it, and uh, probably head down a few levels. Also, as part of the experience, you can actually come on the outside area. I didn't realize there was an out outdoors part to it. Uh, it's kind of scary when it's open. <laughs> so I'm down on level 148 now. So this is where it's kind of the not VIP ticket brings you to 148. You pay a bit extra. You go all the way up to the top to 152 and then you have the other lounge. There's also a lounge here but you don't get as much uh, freebies with it. I say freebies, you paid for the top one. So what do I actually think about this thing, Burj Khalifa? Well, it's actually a pretty interesting experience as a whole, uh, just because of what it is as a building. But one thing I didn't realize was when I actually bought the ticket and I asked to go to the, all the way to the top, I calculated it to be around 75 pounds. So I thought, okay, 75 pounds for a one-off experience is not a problem. What I didn't realize was it was actually 150 pounds. And I only realized this afterwards when I, when I checked my, uh, my bank card and I realized how much it had drawn out. So the question is this, is it worth going and is it worth going on the VIP treatment all the way to the top? Well, if you're gonna do it, you may as well pay the extra because 
the difference in price isn't that huge and you do get some extra benefits such as queue jumping and stuff but you still actually have to queue but it's just not as long and even on the way down it's slightly quicker uh, in terms of the lounge yes the lounge for the VIP is way better um, this has darker corners the seating and it's a lot more exclusive the ones on the bottom are a bit busier so um, and they're quite lit up as well so you don't actually be able, especially if you go up at night you won't be able to see outside as well as if you go on the VIP level and then afterwards obviously you get to enjoy the uh, tea and the coffees and the free alcohol drink if you choose to have it so overall quite a nice experience but it is hectic going up there there's queue after queue you can't just go up in one shot you have to change elevators about four or five times on the way up and on the way down and there is a lot of people especially like today it is um, Saturday and it's super busy so just bear that in mind look how many people are here I'm going to just turn the camera around now So I imagine this whole experience would probably have been less hectic if it was midweek. Maybe my mistake, but I'm very tight on my schedule here with my actual work and my free time. So I had to squeeze it in today because it's the only gap I actually have. But I would recommend going up the Burj Khalifa as a conclusion. Just remember to probably do it midweek and the cost as well. If you don't if you aren't able to convert the, the currency as quick as I wasn't able to, then definitely remember it's actually quite expensive to go to the top, but there are benefits with it. And if you are gonna go, you may as well pay that extra bit and go to the top. So hope you guys enjoyed this quick tour. Hope the Burj Khalifa and see you soon.